Um, what was it like for me? Um, was it was pretty unpleasant, um, but you know, considering um, the stuff that goes on in the background, we did pretty well to to, to get a team together. Uh, Thirteen new players tonight, so um, you know we're going to celebrate that. Just too good for us, you know. It's pretty simple, um, you know. But um, we don't get to play tier ones often. If we get a chance, we're going to have a crack. Of course. Can you talk to us through just how hard it is to assemble a team for this match in the current climate? Oh, look, in the current climate, in, in, for us in any climate, it, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Then you add the COVID on top of that, it's, it becomes more of a challenge. But, you know, you look, it will, in, in all the campaigns I've gone through, our boys, they don't complain or moan, maybe just get on with it. You know, we don't stay and focus on negatives and we didn't get this, we didn't get that. We just wait, we move on. Well, I mean, we've, we've captured 13 new players. Um, I think there's some really gold nuggets there. You know, there's probably three or four players that could probably keep playing for the Kalitahi consistently. Um, and, 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 that, and, that, and that's great for us. You know, we're throwing the net wider. Uh, we're looking at more players, so it's a huge positive. Um, look, I mean, it, it, originally we, we had the Maoris, but uh, for some reason it um, didn't turn out that way. So we don't care. We'll take it, we'll play it, we'll give it our best shot. Um, yeah, it was disappointing that we lost by that much, but, um, it, it, you know, it'll be memorable <laughs> for, the, for, the, for the new players. Um, but we move on, mate. It's a you know, bad day at the office <coughs> against the best team in the world. Do you continue to have trouble getting players released from the north? And is it, I know the COVID situation, uh, you know, prevents you getting some players, but are, club, are you still finding, you know, players being influenced by clubs in the north? And if so, is that, is that a big concern? Um, well, uh, not, not, not usually. I mean, COVID's obviously a layer of difficulty. Um, and then, um, but um, you've got the French Championships and the English Premiership Championships pretty much um, aligned with this this kind of window. So you've got to hope that some of those players don't don't make it. Um, but this time around, it's just been mainly because of COVID. Players not coming back due to just quarantine costs. Quarantine. Uh, they don't get. They usually get the what, the one month off, and then they're back at training. They're kind of not, probably not going to spend all of that in quarantine. Yeah. Um, you, yeah, usually, um, um, but we, we've tried to we've tried to subsidise that. So I think we're still working through that. Oh, I, I, I think this generation, they just trash it pretty quickly and, 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 and flush it and then move on quite quickly. Maybe, <coughs> maybe in the era, my era, we'd probably, probably linger a bit more, but I think these guys move on quite quickly. I guess the first thing about is you've got 13 guys that get to represent their country for the first time, despite the scoreline. What will that have meant to them and how will they remember the luck? Bloody memorable, regardless of the score. I mean, there's a couple of players there who... Um, our blindside, um, Kafatolu, uh, he's 32, making his debut. He's been playing ITM Cup for five or six years really consistently well. This is his dream come true. I mean, he's this game he's going to remember for the rest of his life. Um, and to be able to play against the All Blacks, he's going to be able to tell those stories against... Uh, to his grandchildren, you know. Yeah, no matter what, you can't stop the Dorman fans from singing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, all of our fans tonight, they, they, uh, they're acting like we won. Um, they, they're crazy supporters. Um, they, don't, they, they don't care about the score. Um, as long as we represent with pride and passion. And, you know, our, you have a look, our boys didn't give up. Even to the end when some of the coaches were yelling, kick the, <laughs> kick the ball out, they still... <laughs> 
thought they could score a try. So you got to you got to give them that. They never gave up. Um, and <coughs> the effort I thought was fantastic. I mean, there's some execution and some decision making there that we need to work on, but um, can't fault the effort. So, what's it like being on the field, hundred posts after? I just keep telling them, just keep fighting, and we're Tongans, we don't give up easy. Let's just stuck together and yeah, keep fighting and move on. Thank you, everyone, for coming. You know, passion and pride, obviously, that you guys play with. How did you feel coming off the field after that? I just feel proud. Like I said outside, I just feel proud of the boys. We didn't give up, we keep fighting to 80 minutes, even as um, <clears throat> a full time and it was 95 nil and you know, we just, it's my decision to say it, just tap the ball and keep going. We're not gonna give up, whatever the score is, don't worry about it, just, you know, give fight to the end and yeah. What's it like playing the All Blacks when they're hitting you at that sort of pace and some of the skills they're able to show you just what was that experience like? Oh, yeah, it's tough, but we just um, just got to front up and 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 take it. Um, yeah, it's, but it's always good to play against a tier one team, especially the, the AVs, um, number one team in the world. Um, yeah, for yeah, it was, it's tough to take. Yeah. <clears throat> um, oh, look, there's, there's a range of things, you know, the, the quick fix for us, because we don't get, we get two windows a year, which is probably about four weeks, you know, we haven't got the luxury of having all our players play in the one competition and then we can, we can train them whenever we want. So probably the biggest, the biggest quick fix would probably just get access to our better players. Um, that's probably the quick fix. And the next one is, is probably, probably can't be done, but to spend more time together. <coughs> um, but yeah, I'd, I'd say getting, you know, better quality players. Since obviously not the result you wanted, but nice to just get back on the field for the team after a long time between drinks. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's good to just, <coughs> different team, um, running out with 13 new players out there um, yeah, I was this whole day. Uh, this whole day, I was just very um, emotional and um, yeah, just just proud and just look at their faces. It was just you know they're not gonna they not gonna give up. They're just gonna keep fighting, keep fighting. Even you know we keep going under the post, but um, yeah. How excited were you when you first actually were going to get to play tests this year? Oh, I was very happy. <laughs> um, yeah, I was over overseas, and yeah, I always put my hands up, and you know, to be available to come come over and represent the country. What was kind of said amongst the group ahead of this game when he's knowing that you're going to be up against it? Uh, we know it's going to be tough. Um, we just say let's just go out there and enjoy it, um, enjoy and have fun, and and just do your best. And yeah, I think I think. We did um, as a team, as, as I said, we yeah we we'll just keep coming and keep fighting. Paul, would a change in the eligibility laws also help? Um, it help help what? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, look, there's a, there's a few players there ready to be capped. Um, it's just all about the timing. Um, I mean, it depends what part of the eligibility. I certainly believe there should be a stand down period. Um, you know, my opinion is that extra, uh, that extra hoop that they have to jump through in terms of playing sevens is pr probably, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's probably just a layer of complication that probably we, it, we don't need. Um, I'm happy with just a three or four year stand down. Suit us, suit us a lot. Our, our, if we, if that's possible, our team transforms.
do you see violence so again if it, if it takes place Right boxes attack. Do you see that being helpful? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I could, I could keep, I could keep a lot of my players locally. You know, um, I, I don't have to send them overseas to France or to or to the other competitions. Um, I can keep them here where we can, um, where we can um, monitor them and observe them. How do you pick a squad when you've got guys playing in ten different competitions, twenty different games a week across the world? With a lot of difficulty, <laughs> but we, we, that's 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 been that's been our um, that's been our situation for for years. So we, we picking the teams not not the actual issue is when you do just seeing the availability or the quality of the players that are there to to pick from. I mean, when you when you pick a team, you basically go straight to the best competitions in the world. So you know, it's probably Super Premiership. And the top fourteen. So. Have you thought about yourself playing for one of the Super Cup? Is something you thought about all the way up? Yeah, I have. Um, but I, I would love to to come back and yeah, have a crack here at uh, Super. It was always in my dream to play Super. Um, yeah, but I think I'm getting too slow and old. Because <laughs> <laughs> I am looking into. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some there's some snapshots there that we I thought were positive. Um, a lot of stuff that we need to just keep chipping away at. But um, you know, we can we can we can present that to the boys and present a positive picture, which is what we'll do. Um, and then we'll just get around. Like we'll, we'll make we'll, we'll make the whole deal about capping 13 new players. That, that's going to be what we'll drive tonight. Um, and then, you know, we'll flush this game and then concentrate on some more. Just quickly, you know, you're talking about access to players and eligibility rules. Can you see or, or are you hopeful that that will actually change in the near future? I hope so, before my coaching tenure runs out. Um, <coughs> if not, um, the next coach will have a really good team. But um, I hope so. Like, there's only so, like, that's... That's at another level, you know. I can voice, um, we can voice our, as a union or as a as a coaching group, we can voice our opinions. But um, you know, th those changes need to be. Um, it's discussed at a higher level than me. Yeah. Looking into next week, do you, do you have other players that are coming in that will be eligible for next week's game? Yeah. So we've got probably two players that just hopped out of um, uh, quarantine this week. Uh, another couple next week, although Brisbane's gone into lockdown, so I think the bubble's closed. So there's one of our guys is quarantining in Brisbane, so we won't be able to get him, looks like. So um, there's probably one or two more. Yeah. Uh, so um, um, there's Ben Tamafuna, who's uh, in quarantine, um, and there's Sam Vucker, who's just come out the last couple of days. Um, Maletoa Hingano was is in Brisbane, so um, it's just those three. Given you know the current restrictions in place, does World Cup qualification possibly you think it needs to take a bit of a back seat? Can I mean, everyone has access to their players? Oh look, I think I think Samara in the same vote. Um, they've they've had some issues getting access to their players. Um, mate, we just we just we. We just whatever whatever it is, it is, and we just move on. Um, you know, we, we may we may shoot some objections through our governance, but um, I'm just a lowly coach, mate. I just get, you know, I just here's 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 a band. Let's just go run with it, mate. Yeah, so.